Let's rev it up! Cause I am sure hungry for one- Help! Help! What's up guys, this is Jordan with Dirty Union Boys and we are back with another profile. What do we have today? Hi, I'm Sean. I'm bringing you Rika just released out of new set Secret Slayers. All right, now in a nutshell, what does the deck do? So it's really towers control kind of thing. A lot of control control variants. I don't really play any skill and second cards because it's primarily wanting to go first. And its gimmick is tributing to gain more advantage. So a lot of the cards, they have one kind of okay effect and then one really good effect that you have to tribute a plant's monster okay. in order to activate. Alright. So start off with the monsters. We got three Rika Petal. This is literally your starter. You want to see this as much as possible. Um, it's got a passive or a trigger effect in the end phase where you can special summon it from the graveyard during your opponent's end phase, and then it's got an activated effect during your main phase where you can either foolish a plant monster or eras Rika monster or add it to your hand. Nice. Um and then we got the level sixes which are three Erica. Uh, this card is a uh, attack declaration hand trap. Unfortunately, it doesn't work in the damage step, but it, uh, whenever one of your, an attack is declared involving one of your Rika monsters, you can tribute the card from your hand, which is very important because it triggers other effects, or field and add a thousand attack defense to that monster. Okay. And then with the other level sixes, we have three Mudan. And this card, whenever it's special summoned by the effect of a plant, including its own effect, uh, you get to search a Rika spell or trap, which is really nice because it helps you kind of build advantage and build tempo. And its effect is you can tribute one plant monster you control to special summon from your hand. Nice. Um, then going into the level 8, we have two Helleborn, which uh, allows you to, during your turn, i got to read this because I'm dumb, You can tribute one plant monster and then special summon this card. And if you do it that way, if it's removed from the field, it gets banished. And then I run two Snowdrop, and Snowdrop's effect allows you to tribute a plant type monster you control and special summon it and another uh, Rika monster from your hand. And what th this kind of works hand in hand with each other to make the rank eight that we'll see later. But I only run two of each because they're really, really, really bricky. You don't really want to open either one of them. And then uh, for the level fours, I run two Primula. And this one's kind of like goes hand in hand in building advantage because anytime you attribute a plant type monster, except during the damage step, uh, you're able to special summon this card from your hand. So like if you were to tribute an effect with, or attribute a card with snow snowdrop, special summon her and another plant, you could special summon this card from your hand and just gain more advantage that way. Okay. And then rounding out the monsters, we play three lone fire yeah. blossom for obvious reasons because So you, I actually have a question. Yeah. So do you lone fire, lone fire, lone fire? No. Into this card, or do you no. just lone fire straight into this card? You just lone fire like straight into this card or whatever okay. card you happen to need. Because because the deck is all plants, you want to maintain your grind game. So having another lone fire is basically literally like having another copy of every other card in your deck. Because right. I know some some people just to say screw it yeah. and just go for it. I don't like the deck thinning because it doesn't really it doesn't change your percentages enough to make up for the fact that you're losing a resource in the deck yeah. that could pull you out later in the game. True. Sure. Alright. And then with spells, first we got Pot of Extravagance to three. Yeah. Because uh, it relies on the extra deck, but it literally relies on like two monsters in the extra deck. So for the most part, you're always banishing non consequential targets. And like I said, in the monsters, it's very important you get to your level one as fast as possible. So you always want to be able to have something to pull you out if you end up breaking or not getting what you need. Okay. Then we got three Rika Glamour. This card, uh, when you activate it, you can also tribute a plant type monster as cost in, in in addition to activating it. If you don't, it's literally just like a rota for the archetype. It searches any Rika monster. And if you do, then you can search a Rika monster and a second monster with the same level but different original name. Nice. Um, usually made for use for getting the level eights out, which it is the reason I run it. Yeah. Um, 
Then we have Rika Flurries. It's really hard deciding on whether I want this card at one or two because you can search it. But basically this card is uh, in effect that whenever you tribute a plant type monster, you force your opponent to tribute a card too. Oh really? So so it, it kind of helps with your tempo control and everything. And this deck's all about tributing. So like you can use your, your glamour to tribute a monster and surge, and then your opponent has to tribute a monster. Does that as well. activate every time um, a plant is tributed or is it a once per turn effect? It's a hard once per turn, okay. but it's during the player's turn. Oh. Okay. And it it's any time that you would tribute a plant except during the damage step. Okay, that's pretty cool. And then to round out our other one of's, it's one foolish burial because if you for whatever reason can't get to the level one, you could foolish it, sit on a bunch of back row, and hope you get to the end phase and it special summons itself. And then one for one because obviously the level one's the most important card in the deck. Yeah. So you, you essentially quote, quote unquote I have five ways, or a you have eleven ways to get to the low, yes. level one. Yes. Okay. Um, with traps, as this is a control deck and it's primarily plant, they're pretty much all plant based. We were on three rivalry with warlords. Uh, I really like this card just because a lot of decks like it stops some orcus combos and in like your uh, uh, some of your shut all combos and stuff like that from going into cards like Appaloosa and whatnot, which is really nice. Um, plus, you can just play under it unaffected, so it's really not a neg to have in the main deck. And then with Rika Traps, we have two Tranquility. Tranquility is like a Monster Reborn at worst and a double Monster Reborn at best. It allows you to uh, activate it and you can target one Rika monster in your graveyard to special summon it. But if you tribute a plan in addition as the activation cost, you can special target two Rikas and special summon them. And that card combos really well with Rika Sheet because Rika Sheet allows you to target an opponent's monster and its effects can't be activated this turn. Kind of like a worse impermanence. But the second effect is if you tribute the plant monster in addition for activation cost, it allows you to take control of that monster and then it makes that monster a plant. So now you can tribute your opponent's monster that's now a plant and then get your special summon okay. and kind of recur, recur resources. And as, like I said several times, we're a control deck, we're obviously maining three Solemn Judgment. No, for sure. I think this card's probably, if you're going to main a Solemn, I think this card's the best Solemn to main because it stops spells and traps too, which stops, you know, from getting your evenly matched, your Lightning Storm, or stops a lot of your opponent's advantage. And then I don't main any hand traps outside of the three infinite permanents. I feel like this is just, if you can fit one in a deck that doesn't fit to your theme, I think Impermanence is just an excellent card because it works both on the field and in the hand. Nice. Is that 40 cards in the main? It is 40 cards in the main. I knew you wouldn't come up to me with some 41 card deck, right? No, I, I thought about it because I'm debating on running three of the level four because it special summons itself and it's really convenient when like you end up like only getting one monster and you want to tribute it to get the double surge or something like that. But I haven't done enough testing to really decide whether to run it or not. An extra deck? Yeah, so with the extra deck, we obviously have three teardrop, the Rika Queen, because, I mean, this card is just really good. It uh, It's quick effect, only if it has a plant monster as an exceed material, so if you're thinking about, like, running it as a splashable deal, it's not a quick effect if you don't have a plant monster as exceed material. And it's quick effect allows you to target one card in your opponent's field and just tribute it. Or one card, period. Or one monster, period. And just tribute it. It's face down or not, just tribute it. It doesn't matter. Right. Which is really nice. Um, we don't make this card very much, but we run three Kanzashi. She really just helps you build resources because any time that... Uh, oh, I gotta read real quick. I don't, use it, I don't use it second effect much. But any time a plant monster is tributed... Um, you can target one monster in either player's graveyard and special summon it, but negates its effects. And then if a Rika, if, if a plant monster on your side of the field would be destroyed by battle card effect, it allows you to uh, tribute a plant monster on your field or in your hand instead. Sure. Um, and then most of the rest of this is just extravagance targets, but I figured it has a lot of rank eight ability, even though you get locked into plants. So I run three Dengirsu. And then obviously the super poly targets being three starving venom and 
two mud dragon because I only have two, so my 15th target to banish off of uh, extra of it is Opelosa. Oh, you mean the Prismatic? The prismatic Opelosa, because uh, why not flex? <laughs> I see we got it like that. All right, and you have a side deck for us, right? Yeah, yeah, I got a side deck. This side deck's pretty much based on what we've played against up till now, because I feel like the format's not going to change a whole lot. We haven't had any massive ban lists or real shifts or anything, no tournaments to go to. And uh, first off is three Ash Blossom. I feel like Personally, it's just if you're gonna run only one, I feel like it's the best one to run because it stops your it stops a lot of effects, stops waking the dragon if you hit it with lightning storm or something. Generically the best. Yeah. Um then I run three there can only be one, which if it's up and you lose advantage, it's really bad because it's all plant type monsters. But the nice thing about this is if you manage to get advantage, a lot of times flipping this on someone's normal summon is just game yeah. if they can't out it. And then the can't break the board club, three evenly matched because it's just good. Yeah. Uh, three lightning storm, and then three super poly. Nice. Now, now is there any last minute comments you have about the deck? Um, I really like it. It runs a decent mid game grind. Uh, it's really grindy. I mean, it's a control deck. Uh, a lot of people are playing like testing combo variants of it and whatnot, plant combo. I've never really liked those builds. I like the control based build a lot better. A um, couple things I might change about the deck. I might run more of the level four just because she special summons herself out, which is really nice. It gives you a little bit more of an extender. But overall, I'm very happy with the testing that I've had with it. Perfect. Perfect. This is Drawing 30 Evening Boys signing off.